Hello and welcome back to Europa Universalist 4. I am Lord Farmand. You're playing as the mighty Mughal Empire. The Ming are falling. We have hit the Age of Revolutions. Uh, we are doing very well in that sense. And we should soon, soon, start getting some of these Splendor stuff so that we can actually uh, get unrestricted coin distance and get a hold of the Mongols' capital, which is our main goal. Um, or the Mongolian culture provinces, which is our main goal. So we do not, in fact, have currently the Enlightenment. We have a terrible ruler on the throne. I hope he dies soon. Uh, we have a fairly good amount of trade. I could probably rejigger it a little bit to make more money. Um, but for now, I think we'll stay with what we got. And... Uh, it's really just a matter of either waiting till the Ottomans are willing to help us in a war, which they're not, because they're fi currently fighting Ternate over, like, a single province or two. Yes, they are fighting over, like, two provinces. And uh, the French are currently conquering something. Uh, they're fighting Austria. And this area has become a ma mismatch of all these different countries. We've got Savoy, we've got Great Britain, we've got Portugal, we've got the Ottomans, we've got Russia, we've got Spain, who else do we have? The Netherlands of all people, um, obviously the Mamelukes, the French. I don't see anyone else, but I wouldn't be surprised if some people show up. Ottomans control Taiwan, which is amazing. And the Ming are seriously having trouble. They managed to border all these empires, so their non-tributary penalty is growing. They don't have many tributaries. Their prosperity is failing. They're actually really killable right now. I just want it to go as low as possible. They're going to have almost no mercenaries, which is what we want. And the shock and fire damage will be lovely to see. Yeah, they still have 241 mercenaries, but if we kill them, we might actually have a shot. And apparently we also get another Diplotech. Awesome. A little bit ahead of time, but it's not like we're hurting for Diplo points. There we go. Spreading a little bit, up to 4%. <sighs> the Enlightenment spreads so slowly. Um, you know what, let's take a level 3 guy here, because... Level 3 guy in the long run, the Discipline, I think will help more. Uh, we don't actually have 125% Discipline, which kind of is a shame. We're a little bit short, 5%. What happened? Something about Deacon's efficiency as a march has changed? I missed that. I don't know. Whatever. Pegu is apparently a tributary state. I did not realize that. You're entirely useless and you hate me. But you will pay tribute. Yeah. I guess I'll take it. Might as well have another tributary state I don't really need. Since I'm locked out of this, I'm not bothering to try and finish off these last ones. Which is a shame, but we might be able to do the Open China one for fun. Google China. We'll see how that goes. It really does have, like, a quest for us to conquer all that area down there. He wants me to conquer all of this. Maybe we will, but we gotta break China first. I think right now if we attack anything, China would still attempt to defend them, which is not what we want to have happen. On the other hand, we might be able to attack China soon and just have to wait on the unrestricted coring distance. Let's 
lost the diplomatic advisor. That's not a huge issue for me. Uh, if we were to attack the Ming, the Ottomans still would not join. Too far in debt. Stupid Ternate. I don't know why the Ottomans are struggling with this. They just need to march in and take these provinces, but they're unwilling to do so. I think Ternate also owns some of these. Whatever, eventually the Ottomans will win. And I could theoretically overrun Persia, but they're defended by everybody under the sun. Ottomans included. Royal Mortars. Next one is Light Infantry Companies. If we can get that, we should be able to smash them in on our own, let alone with anybody else's help. The only worry I have is that the Persians will be attacking us at the same time we're attacking the Ming. And I'm not looking forward to fighting a two-fronted war versus them. I don't think we even have any innovation, so I can freely lose innovation. Oh, we do actually have innovation. Some free admin power, not bad. We almost have the institution spread through our lands. Let's mothball our forces again, that way we make money. Almost a hundred a month. It's pretty amazing! The amount of money we spend on our army. We're only ranked third in the world in military. First in admin, obviously. 21st in Diplo, which is a shame. Also, the Ottomans are no longer a lucky nation, so that is a... No, they are still. Must be 1750 they fall off. There we go. One more admin level, then we can get, if we want it, another idea tree going. Probably would do quality, honestly. Yeah, probably I'd do that. Get some of the infantry combat going. Because all we have really is cavalry combat, morale, and other stuff. The Mughals do not have what you would call a particularly militarily strong tree, other than the free policy and the discipline. Cavalry combat's nice, but not a game changer. The Ming are down to three... Mandate. We need 9,000 gold <clears throat> to get the institution. It's spreading reasonably fast to our other provinces, so the longer we wait, the less it will cost. I could probably get a loan from these guys for 1,000. It's a shame there's no real way for me to get money other than taking loans as these guys. No real merchants to take money from. We are trading in silk though, which is cool. And trading in dyes, and trading in cotton, which would help for colonizing if we ever needed to colonize. I don't think we get the Silk Road, because that would cause way too much conquest needed to... Which would be a shame, though, because I do own a lot of it, but I'd have to conquer all Persia, the Ottomans, and China. I mean, we probably could if we put uh, put some effort towards it, but I don't feel that this is the game, because I'll get that on a world conquest anyhow. As of recording this, I still haven't decided what country I'm going to do next for a conquest. Not sure. I don't really want to play in India again, having just played two games in India. But maybe back to Europe? We'll see. The Poland patch would encourage me to play on Poland, so we'll see. 
You guys might already know what I'm playing by the time you see this. Eight thousand. We're slowly getting closer. Also, our garrisons are very strong with ten thousand men in them. So our ability to hold our forts is really good, especially the mountainous ones. The Ming are somehow stable right now. But it's only going to take one more to pretty much start their complete collapse. Especially since they can't ever reform away from the Celestial Government. Really. Interesting that they took essentially the same um, government reform tree with the only exception of regional representation as I did. It's interesting to see that. Um, how's Deacon's manpower looking? 74,000. Okay, they are rebuilding. The Ming too, but... Ming with no mandate is a joke, so I'm not worried. I'm more worried about whether the Ottomans are ever going to leave the war versus turn 8. They're so broke, it's ridiculous. Oh, apparently they've now vassalized the Mamelukes. <laughs> Ottomans wouldn't... Uh, sorry, the Tunis Tunisians wouldn't join because it's a far-off war, which makes sense. I don't know why the Ottomans still have yet to take this province. Oh, okay, they have, a, they have a ship, finally. Are they going to do it? Are they going to do it? I don't think so. I have no idea where the Ottomans just moved their army, but wherever they did, it isn't worth it. Darn. Oh wait, they're moving other troops around. No, why are you moving it to here of all places? You're at war over here. AIs, I don't understand the AIs. I don't understand the AIs. There's... Anyhow, we can safely say the Muslims have conquered India. The Hindus are slowly declining in population. We have 7% of trade power there, 6 or 7%, which isn't bad. We haven't gone trade ideas because it's not really worth it right now, but there we go. We can embrace the institution. Awesome. We now have all of it and we can culturally convert like you wouldn't believe. Not that we really want to. About a year, and then we'll have unrestricted coring distance. I don't think it's worth conquering China. I think I'll just go straight for the actual war goal. Uh, I might need to take some money to pay the, ma'am, the Ottomans to join the war, though, since apparently they can't be turn eight. It's just stupid. Twenty-eight animist rebels are preventing the Ottomans from winning this war. That is just dumb, in my opinion. Um, we could probably wipe these guys out. Let's declare war. Declare war. Imperialism. Wipe them out. Yawn. Despite having no morale, my march won that fight. <laughs> oh, well, whatever. Uh, the other thing by having Deacon is we get the Vice Royalty of Deacon, which gives us 10% admin efficiency. Our coring ability must be ridiculous.
so we have 60% core already, and we have 50% admin efficiency. So how much are these provinces worth taking? I'm curious. Two. A little over 2 3%. That's crazy. And we still have another one to go later on. It's pretty powerful. Um, we essentially want to take all of this. There we go. We've integrated that culture group. That gives us another one done. The Kormandal Coast. Awesome. Uh, it does not give us a full... Culture group down here, why not? Alright, these guys are in the Dravians. Oh. Interesting. Those guys are scattered all over the area, aren't they? And we've maxed out Diplo Power. Might as well just spend it on developing at this point. It's not like we're going to take an admin, uh, Diplo idea group anyhow, so... There we go. We'll boost it even higher. The Ming have nothing. I think it's time to move in on them. Yes, in less than a month we'll have enough to take them out. The question is, can we get the Ottomans to join? The answer is... Definitely no, unless we take loans. And I don't really know if we want to take loans to help there. We could theoretically debase the currency and then do the whole legalism thing. Send a gift to the Ottomans for 2,000 gold. Maybe that'll be enough. It'll certainly help their economy. This is going to be interesting, to say the least. We're going to hit them with as much as we can from the south. I'll worry about um, the north. I'll call the Orate into the war. Pretty sure I can do that. Um, at least they hate the, uh, the Ming enough that that should work. Come on. Are we going to be able to call the Ottomans into this? No, they're still in debt. Great. I'll have to trust my forts to hold out, or do I leave? I might leave 62,000 troops here. That way, those 62,000 should be able to keep Persia busy if it comes to that. Plus, Hormuz will be a distraction. Hopefully, Deccan will as well. So we'll move into position, then we will attack. Oh, I have another army to move. Okay, um... There, I guess. Got an invincible army. We don't care about that. Uh, we're going to take another policy. Oh, we have all our policies. Okay. This reinforcement costs really should come in handy here. Um, but we can always switch it if we need to. The land force and manpower recovery would be ideal there. We have significantly... We have like 70% reduced uh, attrition. Give or take some. It's not exactly accurate. Uh, um, give you to there, I guess. Time to pick a fight with the Ming, because the Ming are currently having trouble with Korea. Uh, we will go for Imperialism. The trick will be for me to move in groups of, like, two regiments at once. That way we don't actually send any groups off on their own. The Orate should be able to trounce the Ming in the north. The only problem is, of course, if they take Mongolian land, we want 
Um, I should probably have said all the Mongol culture provinces are to be desired by myself. I can't add it because they've already made it a province of crucial interest. That could be a problem. Um, yeah. That will be a problem. Mm, okay, we'll figure something out. We'll figure something out. Um, I might send this army directly at Persia's capital in hopes of uh, messing up there. Uh, I can take their capital. I might be able to piece them out. I mean, um, forts are going to be hard to take without barraging because that's going to be... The Chinese have some crazy fort defense. Great wall and all of that. One army. Can I send you up there? Kind of. It looks like the decans, decan, and or rate are going after Persia for the moment. Which is good to see. Less work in the long run for me. I should probably just merge these armies together. The attrition shouldn't be too terrible. It's kind of what the Ming did when they were fighting me, yeah. Let's just have some 90,000 or 86,000 stacks wandering the countryside. Kind of horrifying when you think about it, but 1% attrition isn't bad. 1.4 is even less of a problem. 1.5, yeah. That should be significantly higher attrition-wise, but it isn't. Also, apparently Korea is trouncing the Ming now, which is awesome. Is Persia involved in... No, Persia is not in fact involved in the Ming's defensive war there. Interesting. Kind of annoying too, but interesting. Um, we need to get up here and take these so that we can actually occupy... So Lautenberg is now emperor. Where in the world are you guys hiding now? There you go. They've been kicked out of their province of Lautenberg and now have moved down to Lundberg. We may in fact see Brandenburg form uh, Germany. They should be able to do Prussia. They're just in a war right now. You might see Prussian... Oh wait, they're Catholic, right? Ah, they can't form Prussia. That would be why they haven't formed Prussia. They can't form Prussia. Kind of amusing that you can't be Catholic and form Prussia. Canton has fallen. The fall of China is here. I'll leave. I'll just. I'm just gonna go for the fort. I'll leave all the sieging to Decan and stuff. Also go straight for Persia's capital with my army. Persia could theoretically beat my armies, but I don't think they can. I just don't think they have enough men. At some point, manpower is what it comes down to. Um, you guys are going up there. Can I catch you? I'd really like to win a fight or two against Chinese armies. We've won one fight, so... This is where, in fact, is the Mongols. Okay, so I need all of that. Okay, let's Actually, let's split you in half for the moment. I'll raise another leader here. Send you to there. Got to make sure I can get control of these regions. All we want is Mongol culture. So far, we've got a shot at doing it, because... Or rate has yet to occupy any of those. Oh, I thought I was sending you to a fort. Oh no, I was hunting an army. Gotta remember what I'm actually doing with my troops. It does matter. A little bit. Ah, 
that fell. We've taken Persia's capital. I don't think that's enough for peace, but it makes them a lot less likely to want to keep fighting. They're not doing too well in this war. They're not doing terrible, but they're not doing that well. Deacon is keeping them busy, which is why we have Deacon. Deacon has one purpose, and that is to handle all the little little, little stuff that I don't want to be bothered with. Um, that's not Mongol, so we don't care about it. That is, and we have to take that fort. We also still need to take Beijing itself to get the uh, ticking war score. But considering Korea is still fight beating the Ming, I'm not too worried about our chances. The Chinese can't even fight my small armies, let alone larger ones. Not with the shock and fire penalties. It's just ridiculous. 50% shock and fire, plus the fact they can essentially raise no more mercenaries. Actually, yeah. They've actually been reduced to 83 mercenaries. So, this is over. They just don't know it yet. We're not even really losing that many troops to attrition. Okay, you're good there. Um, oh, I can't actually march there yet. Don't know if I want to send 51,000 into a much larger fight, though. That might be a little too reckless. You guys can go straight to Beijing, though. Boy, the Ming are powerful. They're going to attack me there. Oh wow, I'm actually going to have to... I actually have to worry about the Ming. Um, let's go Golden Age, because we're losing. Wow, we lost that fight. That's sad, to say the least. We're going to lose this fight, too. Oh, no, we're going to win it now. Okay. Let me peace out Persia yet. No, getting close, but not enough. We need the war, war goal. Come on. Oh, shoot. You guys aren't going to arrive in time. We're going to actually lose two fights in a row here to the moon. They actually still hurt. I gotta remember that. The Ming are still not to be messed with. I mean, that pretty much demolished their manpower, though, so... They can't rebuild. Although, they probably have a lot of mercenaries in there. Where are you guys going? Oh, okay, that's not too bad. Let's take Beijing. Beijing is not on the mountain range, which was part of our problem. Typical. The one thing I didn't really account for was the mountain range defensive bonus, and that's what killed me. Beijing's going to take a while to fall. Even with a barrage, it's still a very strong fort. <sighs> oh, it's actually one of the stronger forts you can get, because it's level 7 capital city on top. There we go, another fort fall. We'll move up. I think I'll merge these two and then go for that. This is the last key fort we have to take. So, Come on, Persia. There we go, Persia will leave the war. It's now just a matter of time. We can just sit back and pretty much let Deacon handle it if we if it came to that. That's a nice amount of money. I know I'm probably ruining this country for future play, 
right now, considering I'm wasting all my Monarch points through having additional leaders and stuff, but once we get the Home Sweet Cor Corum, I think we're done, so I don't feel too bad about it. Beijing has fallen. Okay. We specifically want the Mongolian culture provinces. I think that's all of them, right? Just to be on the safe side, I should probably take these two. Okay. And... What else can I get away with? I'm just curious to see how much land I can take from China. Can I do my uh, uh, Quinn technique and just take all of that? I can, almost. Well, let's just take the last couple forts and then we will peace out. As long as the Orate doesn't occupy Mongolian provinces, we're all set. And <clears throat> Nanjing just fell. Or Nanjing. However you say it. Uh, we're going to march up to there. We really just need that province and that province occupied. Looks like they culturally converted the rest of these Mongolian ones. If they were ever Mongolian. Which is odd. These provinces are so poorly developed, it's kind of sad. Ming's capital is, you know, 50. These are 13. Strange. Now if we can take this stupid last fort, I'll be happy. The other option is I don't take the coastline. Just take enough fort to actually get to Mongolia, uh, land to get to Mongolia. Border gore the heck out of it. Oh, our ruler finally died. There we go. Guy's a much better ruler. He's also not nearly as evil. Previous ruler was kind of actually legitimately evil, which is funny. Um, take that, take that. Or it should fall soon, even though that was apparently my ruler. I don't think they're going to muster enough troops to take that fort back from me. Come on. I don't know why Deacon's armies are just wandering around up here. Korea took land from China, which is good to see. We can do this. There we go. Another group of ideas. Yeah, what the heck, we'll make it quality even though we're not going to get anywhere there. Another general died. Oh, since I merged them, I actually have a spare general. There we go. And the fort has fallen. There we go. We are not going to take all this land. Um, we should be able to piece out the Mameluke stuff, right? No, but they have gained independence, which is funny. Um, okay, that is Beijing's capital, or China's capital. Um, can we take a line of stuff up there? Okay, we can do that. Let's just make sure that's all the Mongolians. It is. Take any money. No. Actually, yes, we can take a tiny bit amount of money. There we go. The Mongolian people have been assimilated by our government. They no longer pose a threat to our rule. There we go. Home sweet Korakorum. As the Mughals assimilate Mongolian culture. Because, of course. Mughals is Mongolian culture spelled slightly differently with 
U's instead of O's. <laughs> um, I'm actually curious what the bonus is for Mongolian culture. Um, Mongol, 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 where are you? Mongol, Mongol is part of the Altaic. Altaic gives cheaper guns. <laughs> <laughs> the only really good benefits are in India for these. Okay, well, that will be it for this Let's Play. So uh, I'll do a very quick uh, timeline, and then I'll put up a timeline video as well. But since you guys have watched this far, I shall show a timeline for you guys. So, tiny little deli. This will be fun to watch. Okay, well that was fun. So thank you guys all for watching. If you guys enjoyed it and you haven't done so, please like it and subscribe. And check out all my other videos and guide videos. And I hope to see you in another Let's Play. Bye for now.